Jim, are we already in a global recession? That's a great question. The answer is probably yes. Uh, we, we never know for sure until after the fact, because you're in it, you got to wait for the data. Then um, in, the, in the United States, I mean, they're not the global arbiter, but in the United States, we have something called the National Bureau of Economic Research. It's based in Cambridge, Massachusetts. It's not a government agency. It's a private group of about 12 prominent economists, uh, you know, egghead types. And they, they're the ones who declare when the recession began and when it ended. But they're usually, it's like a year after the fact. It's like, you know, maybe in the middle of next year, they'll say, you know, recession started in the first quarter of 2023. Like, thank you. We knew that. But it's, it's usually over before they declare it. So I'm not waiting for the official arbiter. I look at a lot of other indicators. Uh, and they're almost uniformly bad. And they have very good track records of getting the predictions right. Not unlike the Fed, which is always wrong, always late. So without that getting too technical, the Fed's looking at unemployment. And it's based on the so-called Phillips curve. It says, you know, unemployment's down, inflation's up. If unemployment's up, inflation's down. That's the Phillips curve. You know, you can draw it and the Fed's using that to guide policy. The Phillips curve is garbage and it's not a not a personal insult against you know professor phillips it's it's the case that there's no empirical support for it i could give you examples going back to the 1930s of low unemployment low inflation which we had in the early 60s 1930s we had high unemployment low inflation even deflation late 1970s what did we have high unemployment and high inflation that was called stagflation so i can give you examples if you think of it as a quad chart you know unemployment inflation, you know, fill in the blanks. I could give you all four examples, low, 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 high, high, low, high, high, which means there's no correlation. You can have any, if you can have any one of them, there's no correlation. So the Phillips curve has no predictive value on its face because the data doesn't back it up. Last time I looked at a Phillips curve it was a flat line, at least where I went to school curves were not flat, but there it is. Now it's worse than that because Unemployment, even if you thought it was a good indicator of something, particularly inflation, it's a lagging indicator uh, or a lagging indicator of a recession, as the case may be. So let's say you're an employer, a business person. I mean, when you're in a tough spot, when revenues are down and things are slowing down, margins are getting compressed and all that, you, the last thing you want to do is fire people because it took a while to find them, hire them, train them. You don't want to let them go. You do everything else. Like you turn down the lights, you call your landlord, negotiate a cheaper rent, slow pay your credit you know, drive a hard bargain on something. You do everything else to maintain your margins. And then only when all else fails, do you start firing people. But so first of all, it's a lagging indicator. You're already in the recession before you get around to firing people, number one. Number two, because you held on so long, you tend to do it en masse. It's like, it's not like well, I'm going to fire one person a month for the next year. It's like, I'm going to hang on to all of them. And then maybe sadly fire them all at once because I have no other choice. So A, it's a lagging indicator. B, it can turn on a dime from very low unemployment to very high unemployment within a matter of months. Uh, and if that's what the Fed's relying on, which they are, they say so, it's not a guess. They say that's what we're watching. Two things, number one, uh, you're not gonna see the recession coming. It's a lagging indicator and it can go from kind of good to bad almost overnight. So the Fed's you know, drive, you know, driving this way, looking out the, the back window, uh, and they're going to they're probably going to wreck the economy. But there are a lot of other signs to say, okay, okay, Jim, you know, unemployment is not a good measure and it isn't. But how do you know what, what are the good metrics? They tend to be a little technical. They tend to be things that very few people look at, but they're there. They're not secret. Um, the big one, I, I think this gets more no, notice is an inverted treasury yield curve well what does that mean so a normal yield curve it's it's like the longer the maturity the higher the rate that's common sense so if i'm going to lend somebody money for a month i might charge a certain interest rate but if i'm going to lend you money for 10 years i want a much higher interest rate because there's a lot more risk you know inflation uh, default credit risk uh, who knows what uh so a normal yield curve is upward sloping the longer the maturity the higher the rate Okay, right now, yield curves are inverted, which means they're downward sloping, which means the longer the maturity, the lower the rate. Why would you take a lower rate on a 10-year treasury note than you would on an overnight loan, which is, that's where we are today, by the way. The overnight rate is, is over five, and the 10-year rate's you know 3.6, give or take. Well, why would you take a lower rate for a longer term loan? It makes no sense. Well, it makes no sense unless you think the bottom is falling out of the economy. 
Because that, if I buy a 10 year note with a 3.7% yield of maturity, which I could do today, that seems low compared to the 5% for the overnight rate, but that might look really good a year from now. If, if, if interest rates are 1%, if the 10 year note is 1%, that 3.7% rate is going to look really sweet. It's like, hey, I got to make it and get a very high return. So, in other words, this is the big money. This is the institutional money. This is people who know more than central bankers in many cases betting that interest rates are going to come down a lot. Because if they weren't, that inverted yield curve would make no sense. And so they're they're betting that the economy is going to going into a severe recession, interest rates are going to drop, and those three point seven percent yields are 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 going to look really good. Now, just to get a little more arcane, there's something called the SOFR futures curve. You know, uh uh SOFR is the new LIBOR, you know, the there were problems with LIBOR. But these are long-term bets on overnight rates where you know treasury is a snapshot of what i think the 10-year rate is going to be but the sofa is the opposite it they 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 trade in strips you know quarterly settlements that go out three or four years five years but the the long longer ones aren't that liquid uh, but basically i can make a bet as to what i think the overnight rate is going to be one year from today that yield curve is also steeply inverted. The, and again, this is the real who trades so for futures. Well, the institutions and, and central banks and the big money, in other words. Um, and and it's in the data. It's not a guess. Like you can look at it. It's publicly available. And it says rates are going to drop steeply in the months and year ahead. So again, these are when you have an inverted SOFR yield curve, an inverted treasury yield curve. It, it's basically the big money betting that rates are going to drop like a stone. Well, why would that be? Well, there are only two reasons. One, a severe recession and a steep drop in inflation. And those two things do go together. One more example, again, I don't want to get too in the weeds, but there's something, um, the Fed has an overnight reverse repo facility. And what does that mean? The Fed says, hey, give me your cash and I'll give you a, a treasury bill as collateral. And then we'll unwind it at some point in the future. It's called a reverse repo. So I can call up the Fed, have them send me treasury bills as collateral, give them cash, and they'll pay me interest on that. It's it's a phone call. I don't have to do anything fancy. Okay. But the treasury also sells treasury bills uh, at auction, and I can bid on them. And people do. And the yield to maturity on those is is lower than the Fed will give you for a phone call. So why would you bid an auction, you know, take the market risk and get a yield that's lower than the one you can get for a phone call. Well, the answer is that the treasury bill that they send me when I do the, the treasury facility, I cannot rehypothecate it, meaning I, I have to hold it, give it back to the Fed when they want it, but I can't give it to you or anybody else. Whereas if I bid at auction, I can take that bill, I can pledge it to UBS, UBS can pledge it to Deutsche Bank, Deutsche Bank can pledge it to Barclays, and they do. So. But the reason I bid more aggressively for that uh, and take a lower yield, I'm, I'm fighting for a lower yield instead of the higher yield I can get for free, um, is because I need the collateral. That's a sign that there's a collateral shortage, uh, that banks are reducing their balance sheets, they're unwinding derivatives, et cetera. So sorry to be a little technical, but the point is when you look at two inverted yield curves, an auction rate that's lower than what you can get for a phone call, they all say the same thing. Rates are going down, the economy is going to crash, and there's collateral scarcity and banks are tightening, uh, tightening up their balance sheets. So they're all, they're all bad signs.